Buenos dias. Take a look at this beauty. At first glance, it appears to be a humble but effective 3 bit binary counter. It cycles through decimal 0 to 7, and it is synchronous, so the transitions are clean. But check this out. I flip the switch, and now, well, now, the count goes down. At any point, I can flip the switch and the count reverses direction. It doesn't get cleared, so it remembers its current state and continues the count from there. This is called a counter with mode control. The modes I chose are either count up or count down by one. Other modes could be designed, such as count by one or count by two, but this is a sufficient example to illustrate how we can build mode control into counters. As you might expect, the design process begins with drawing a state diagram from the problem statement. Here, our goal is a 3-bit binary counter that can count up or down. Anytime you hear an option like that, it means you must have at least one external input that selects the mode. I decided to name that signal S, and arbitrarily, I'm letting S equal 0 cause a countdown, and S equal 1 cause a count up. These S values are written next to the arrows between the nodes. Clearly, while S equals 1, the count will move up the numbers 5, 6, 7, 0, and so on. And while S equals 0, the count will move down. 2, 1, 0, 7, and so on. As usual, the state diagram is the linchpin that makes the design work. If we understand all the components of this step, all that follows is procedural. Step 2 is to choose the flip-flop type and make the transition table. I chose D flip-flops this time, which actually makes for some pretty complicated logic, as we'll see at the end. Step three is to make the next state table. This looks extremely similar to the counter table we made last lesson. The only new thing is that S appears as a present state column. This has the effect of doubling the size of the table to 16 rows. We need to know what happens after count zero through seven when S is low, and again when S is high. Since I decided that S equals zero causes a countdown, we see that decimal 0 becomes 7 in the top row, 1 becomes 0 in the next row, 2 becomes 1 in the next row, and so on. Pause the video now and try to complete this table on the follow along worksheet. Here we have the completed next state table. Be sure to compare your results with these and correct any discrepancies. The only special thing I'll note is that when s equals 1, the table shows a count up, so 5 becomes 6, 6 becomes 7, and 7 becomes 0. There are only three equations that we need to derive, d2, d1, and d0. But d2 is a doozy. Here we see its k-map. The 1s do not group together very nicely. We obtain three groups of 2 and two groups of 1, which makes this lengthy equation. Good news though, D1 and D0 work out more nicely, and D1 has a unique way of simplifying. Pause the video and derive these equations on the follow along. D0 is the easy one. Hopefully you obtain the equation D0 equals Q0 prime. D1 is trickier. Taken straight from the K-map in SOP form, you should have obtained the four-term equation here. From there, you can factor out S prime from the first two terms. Inside the parentheses would be Q1 prime, Q0 prime, or with Q1, Q0. That is the definition of exclusive NOR, as seen in the next line of the equation. In a similar fashion, for the last two terms, factor out S, and leave exclusive OR within the parentheses. To see this next step more clearly, 
let's do a little substitution. I'll give S the name A and Q1 exclusive or Q0 the name B. Now we can see that this expression is just A exclusive nor B. Subbing back in the original variables, this is the same as the exclusive nor of S, Q1, and Q0. This entire original equation can be achieved with just one gate, a three input exclusive nor. Another way of thinking of the same thing is to realize that exclusive nor is the even function. So D1 will be true only when an even number of S, Q1, and Q0 are true. Now we reach the final step of the design, building and testing. Here we see the circuit in action again. Notice the very cumbersome logic for D2, the single exclusive NOR gate for D1, and no logic gate at all for D0, just Q0 prime feeding right back around. I hope you see how this design process can be used to create any basic counter you desire. You can get rather exotic with the count sequence or the modes available, and this foundation should help you obtain it.